So welcome to Cooking Fun with Joanna. I am Joanna Hadaraska. I am the owner of Nutrition in Motion, and I am a holistic nutritionist and a inflammation expert. Mm -hmm. So what I do is help you feel better quickly and really understand where the, the hidden stress and inflammation are so that you can actually embody your inner awesomeness. So everything that I do is all about ease. We eat better, eat real food, um, cook our food, and your body will love you more. Um, add some anti-inflammatory things to help the body report, repair um, and recover quicker. Then we also want to always constantly distress, um, which real food in the body causes less stress than conscious food. And then it's all about embodying your inner or your inner awesomeness. So um, that's what the E stands for. And today in our cooking fun with me class, we are making some potato lattes. And, uh, you know, similar to basically potato pancakes, but a little bit different. And we are going to be using, we're going to be peeling potatoes and then uh, putting in some onions. Um, we're going to be making some uh, a topping and we're going to make that first, which is going to be like some tomatoes, onions, mushrooms, and um, cauliflower. But I was telling one of the participants earlier that I remember to get the cauliflower and then I forgot to buy the cauliflower. So I am not going to be making the cauliflower. I will just walk you through it and uh, you'll be sauteing that with everything else. And then we're going to make the potato pancakes or the potato latkes and um, uh, then put the, the sauteed vegetables on top of the latkes. So then that becomes your smothered potato latkes. Okay. Easy enough, right? So I have three, three Whopper potatoes. So I'm gonna peel those and then I'm gonna use my mandolin and shred them so that they will be easier to use. So this is really not the, nothing terribly exciting, but you know, if we're gonna be making stuff and we're gonna be making it together, then I have to be making it together with you. So I am going to be um, peeling the potatoes just like you might be doing. Uh, and I, you know, I think for the latkes, they, they typically suggest that you get russet potatoes, but I find that the russets are the anti, are the inflammatory potatoes. I so I got Yukon, the Yukon gold potatoes from a local farm and they had nice big ones. And with these potato pancakes, you definitely want to peel them. Um, probably want to get rid of these, uh, you know, any of these black spots. And then you're going to shred them with the mandolin. But I would suggest to first peel all the potatoes. You're also going to shred half an onion into those potatoes because it's going to just give it some extra goodness. And then once we get that all put together, I think we have to let it sit for a little bit. And then we're going to get the, uh, the vegetables together, saute all those. Um, as we start doing the potato pancakes, because it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to do it both at the same time. But because we're going to try to make it more fun and cost, of, or cost effective, time effective, we're going to start sauteing some of the potatoes while we actually start sauteing the rest of the vegetables. Got it? Yep. So that'll just give you an idea of how the class is going to flow, <laughs> if it's going to flow. Because while you guys are, you know, chopping up uh, cauliflower, I guess the thing that I probably could do is I could take the cauliflower out of my freezer because I have cauliflower rice. So that could be an option that I could do. Because I wanted to add the cauliflower into the, um, into the mix because that's an anti-inflammatory vegetable too. It's one of those cruciferous vegetables, which has the sulforaphane. I know that's, that's a mouthful, is it? It's sulforaphane which is an, an antioxidant and it helps with anti-aging, anti-inflammation, all sorts of things. So I, I have my potato. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shred the potato. Like I said, we're gonna do um, the three potatoes and then uh, half, shred half an onion as well. And if you prefer to just... Um, what? I, I oh. thought I heard somebody call my name and Steve, you're upside down. 
Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, there it is. There you go. I've been upside down my whole life. I mean, I don't mind if you're upside down. I think it would be more of a problem if I were upside down. Hello. The viewers might have a problem. And, you know, if you want to make it really easy, you get your food processor and just um, shred the potatoes that way. Oh. But that's just another gadget to pull out. And, and I can't remember where my blades are, so I'm just going to continue with the handheld mandolin and do the best I can. And the, like at this piece, I'm just going to leave it because... Last thing I want to do is splice my finger on the mandolin edges. Because I don't know, blood in your food is probably not that good of an idea. Although I do like blood sausage. I'm not sure. I'm not sure human blood in my food would be an acceptable option. It might be kosher, I'm not sure. It might be kosher? I don't know. If you cut your finger, I don't know. I don't know, but I'll, I would just have to bless it and, and just forget about it. I mean, I have actually cut my finger before. I remember I was um, cooking with a friend of mine, and all of a sudden I hear, ow, well, he cut his finger. That's the problem with, you know, sharp knives, right? And especially if you get distracted. So I took over and within two minutes, I did the exact same thing and cut my finger. So, but then I, I we had to finish. So I ended up wrapping a, wrapping my, my bloody finger with a tissue. And then I took one of those, you know, the, the disposable gloves, the plastic gloves. Yeah, I took one of those and put that on top. So therefore I had basically like the tourniquet and the pressure from the tissue paper or from the, yeah, from the tissue and, uh, and the pressure from the glove. And I was able to finish making the rest of the meal. So in case I ever have to you, that tip. That's it. Keep paying attention to what you're doing. The potato gets too small. And your fingers get too close to the uh, to the blades, and just save the potato, put it aside, put it in a container, put it in the refrigerator, and use it tomorrow. Or you could probably you know chop it up and put it in with the other vegetables, but you know. Or you know what you could save it, Joanna. So if you over salt something that you're cooking, you just throw the piece of potato in. Right. But a lot of times the potatoes will discolor if you leave them too long out. So sometimes you want to just put them in, in some cold water and then put them in the refrigerator. All right. So there's my potatoes. Now I'm going to try to get the potatoes off my finger so I can grab the knife and cut my. So you'll want a big, big butcher knife. And then you're gonna cut the, the onion in half. And my, my my end's already cut off because I was making um, chicken broth, uh, bone broth this weekend. So I managed to cut off the bottom of it and put it in my bone broth to give it a little extra flavor. So you're just gonna peel off the outer layer. Make sure that that one layer isn't there. And I was just about to chop it, but we're going to try to shred it along with the potatoes. I gotta say, this doesn't work that well, but I'm going to keep, keep at it. My onion is disintegrating is what's happening. It's coming apart. I don't know if yours did this too, but my insides are coming out of the not my insides, but the onion is coming apart. It doesn't shred as well as the potato though, I gotta say. All right, 
I don't know about you, but I'm frustrated with my onion, so I'm going to chop it up and just dice it up really finely. Because otherwise I'm going to be here for another 10 minutes trying to chop up an onion or shred an onion, and it's really, I don't know why it's not really working, but I'm done with playing with that particular aspect. So where's my onion? All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Cut it across. You hurt yourself? No, I haven't hurt myself yet. No. Not yet. You got onion in the eye. Not yet. But I'm gonna cut the cut this in the into slices this way so that I can dice it smaller. Using a whole onion. Uh, half an onion into this one because you're going to use, well, I have a really big onion. So I'm going to use, if you have a regular sized onion, you can use one whole onion. But since mine's a whopper, um, I'm using half. And then I'm going to use the other half in with the other, um, with the other vegetables. So right now, go ahead and, and heat up uh, the one nonstick pan that you have so that we can, or the, or regular pan. I think I'm going to use the nonstick pan for the uh, um, for the potatoes, and a regular ten-inch pan for the vegetables. But go ahead and turn the pan on for the vegetables, especially if you have a um, an electric stove. You definitely want to turn that on now so that heat so it heats up. And then we're gonna go ahead and dice the other half of the onion. And turn on my pan. Put it, uh, if you got an electric stove, you're putting it on high. If you got a gas stove, you're putting it on medium. Oh, look, I got, I got an onion on the floor. My onion fell apart in many ways. So, all right, so now we're going to go ahead and cut the other half of the onion. You gotta peel it first. And this one, you can do it in half moons, just in slices or, um, I'm just going to do mine in, in half moons, about a quarter inch thick. And this is where you, you know, a, a good knife, you cannot, you, it gives you good leverage to push down on the, on the onion. And then dig your nails into it to get the last couple of slices. And now we can put, I have to go wash my hands or rinse them off anyway. All right. And you'll probably want to do the same. Uh, into the potatoes, we're going to add um, a tablespoon, a tablespoon of the garbanzo bean flour. Yeah, who knows, we might have to add two. Tablespoon or? Yeah. Okay. Tablespoon, yes. Well, that's a heaping cut tablespoon. So we're going to start with one tablespoon. I have a feeling we're going to need two, so I'm just going to put in two because we still have to add the egg into here too. So we're going to add a little bit of the olive oil into the pan. Does anybody want to put garlic into theirs? Sip it. Pardon me? No, she's talking to the dog. I heard zip it, and I was like, what does that have to do with garlic? I'm talking to the dog. I didn't even the, hear the dog. Yeah. We're gonna you want the, you want the put garlic the oil into that, into that the, the pan that you heated up. Make sure that it is you know, covering the whole bottom of the pan. 
there. So then it, it's all lightly coated like that. Put the onions in and spread them across the pan. And then I'm going to chop up one garlic clove into here too. So I'm just going to cut them down the edge and just kind of make thin little slices and then just add that into the in with the onions. So it's just one onion. I don't know if that's part of the original recipe, but I'm putting it in there. The onions make everything taste better. I mean, garlic makes everything taste better. So now we're gonna chop up some of these mushrooms. We're gonna take out the, the, um, the stems. But depending on how many people you're trying to make this for, I might actually cut more onion. I think I need more onion in mine. I'm gonna cut another half of an onion. Yeah. So I'm going to cut one more onion and put that into the pan. That one slipped. That slipped without a casualty. All right, more onions. All right, that's perfect now. If you have your um, cauliflower, then you can dice the cauliflower as well. But we're gonna do the same thing with the mushroom caps and just cut them into thin slices. that into the pan. So you're going to do about um, maybe a three quarters of a cup of mushrooms. So depending on the size of your mushrooms, it'll be anywhere from six to 10 mushrooms. Okay. Yep. I was going to say the onions, this is, that's the pan that's for what, Joanna? The, the onions are for all the vegetables. Okay. So, so that, that should be the bigger pan. That should be the bigger pan. Okay. And the non-stick pan, you want a non-stick pan for making the potato pancake latkes. Oh, yeah, pan. We're just gonna let some of these, you know, caramelize in the pan before we finish finish getting the uh the potatoes ready, but we're gonna end up putting an egg into the put into the potatoes. That's what makes it stick. But you're trying to make the the mushrooms kind of like a quarter quarter inch in thickness. They're going to be just long, skinny strips. And I think so one more to do. And I find that, you know, it's easiest when you actually just kind of hold the mushroom firmly and just slice in between into the quarter inch slices. And then you can just Move that knife. If you have the cauliflower, go ahead and um, chop that up. And you, you know, you can do either a quarter of a head or a half a head, depending on how big your um, your cauliflower is. I'm going to go get an egg because we need an egg for the potatoes. So 
we're going to take the take the egg and we're going to break it into the potatoes. And now the fun part is you're going to have to pull your sleeves up a little bit. Just using the egg, the uh, yolks, or are we using the whole egg? The whole egg. Oh, and you're going to okay. mix it all together. Okay, because it said divided, so. Let me mix. Just stick it all together. And it's still a little like liquidy. Yeah. So you might need to put in another teaspoon or tablespoon of the matzo or the garbanzo flour. That's why I didn't put the container too far away. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. Some of it is, you know, you need the, the flour to soak up some of the, the liquid. All right, so now I'll turn on the other pan. We got the, we don't want it on high, otherwise we're gonna have burnt pancakes. And then we're gonna salt, put salt and pepper onto the latkes when we put them in the pan. So this is a spot where I'm just gonna clean my fingers off. This is as, this is how it's gonna be. It looks you know, fairly thick. There's a little bit of liquid, but it's not a lot. So these things will stick. And then we're gonna put the salt and pepper on it when it's in, cooking in the pan. So go, go ahead and rinse off your hands. And we're just gonna use a big, either a ladle or a big uh, serving spoon to put that onto the pan. Yeah. You have a choice of either using a big ladle or I mean a small ladle. This is a small ladle um, or a yeah, serving spoon. So now I'm gonna take you over to the, to where we're cooking and I'm gonna see if I can get this to, to work so you can see what's going on here. Can you see what's going on? Sort of, right? So the vegetables should be cooking right now and caramelizing. So and we have the cauliflower. And add the cauliflower. Yeah. Add the cauliflower. Remember, I don't have the cauliflower. Actually, I'm going to go get my cauliflower and rice. Even if it's frozen, I think it will still work. Well, I put garlic and herb, cauliflower and rice. So I'm gonna put a half a cup of that into my into that pan. You just didn't want to cut up cauliflower. You know what? You know what really happened is I I was at the at Bolton's market on Saturday and I bought the mushrooms. No, I didn't buy the mushrooms there. Um I bought the eggs and a couple other things up there. And they didn't have any cauliflower. So then I, then I meant to pick it up at a different store and I just never did it. I picked up the mushrooms and then completely forgot about the cauliflower. So, you know, there you go. I was just brain dead. So I'll just have cauliflower and rice. And this is gonna let off some extra liquid in here, but oh well, too bad. So now we're gonna put a little bit of ghee because I like the butter flavor with potatoes. I put that in that, in that far pan. And I'm going to move that bowl over here. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil into the pan as well.
So it's going to take about four minutes per side for the potatoes. And the original recipe is like, you know, you, you deep fry it, but I don't know if we really want to deep fry them. So we're just going to use olive oil. And you should feel the heat coming off the pan before you put the potatoes in. So if you want to test it, you can just drop a piece. And if it doesn't sizzle, then it's not ready. And mine's not really sizzling, so. What are we doing with the- uh... Tomatoes. The, no, the, what do you call it? The shiitake mushrooms. Those are about, you were supposed to cut those up and put that in with the cauliflower and the onions. Oh. Well, we had the portobello mushrooms. Are there shiitake on there on the recipe too? Or yeah, there's shiitake on there too, but it was like further down the list. All right, well, you can, you can chop some of them up and, and put them in the pan with the other mushrooms and the cauliflower. Okay, and what about the tomato? The tomatoes are going to go in there too. That, does that go in and the house? I forgot to buy those too. The what? I said I forgot to buy those too. I'm not a very good cook today. So that goes in there also? So that, that will go in here too, but you want this to actually caramelize first before you put this. Right. So that'll be like one of the last things. So I'm gonna put a little bit of salt into, into this dish. Cause you know, when you eat real food, you gotta put the salt into it cause it's not there. And if you buy processed food, you get plenty of sodium. So, and the best, the best salt is either the Himalayan, the Himalayan or the Celtic sea salt. Those are gonna be your best ones. But put a little bit of salt and pepper into both of your pans. Huh? So my potatoes are starting to sizzle. How about you? That? I said my potatoes are starting to sizzle. How about yours? So are mine. I'm just waiting for my cauliflower to melt a bit. We're trying to get this to caramelize too. But now that I added the liquid of the cauliflower, it's probably not going to do that. I'm just going to let that sit there. And then you want a really good spatula to flip everything. And there may be some people that want to make, you know, add some kind of meat to this whole dish, which you probably you could. And I would probably, you know, kind of make us, you know, cut up some chicken or some uh, some other meat that you want and pan sear it in with the vegetables if you wanted to add the, the, the meat component to it. Make sense? Yeah. But you want a fairly large spatula so you can flip. And this one's, you know, flexible too, so it won't scratch the um the nonstick pan. So I'm gonna stir up my mushrooms and cauliflower and just let it simmer. And because the because I added that extra liquid, it's not gonna caramelize like I had originally intended, but that's okay. Are your, um, how's your cauliflower mushrooms doing right now? Good, good. Good. Okay. So in about five minutes, you're going to add probably half the can of the tomatoes. Yeah, I just, I put the lid on it so it'll cook it a little, a little, a little quickly. Faster. Okay. So I don't know if you can see the potatoes from there. 
I'll just move the potatoes over. But can you see how they're starting to cook around the edges? That's what you want to see. But I want it to be a little bit more around the edge and coming through. Mine are starting so to brown. Them, you see mine are starting to brown. Pardon me? Mine are starting to brown. All right, that's good. That's what you want. You want them to start to brown, but you don't want them completely brown. You kind of have to wait until it's almost like the same thing like with with fit, with chicken and pork and other meats where you have to wait till the the edges change color. So that edge has to come around quite a bit before you can cook it. Otherwise, you're going to have raw potatoes right in the middle. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a I'm not a raw potato person. Yeah, that is one vegetable that is not good raw. The only time I like raw vegetable, raw, I, I can actually do raw sweet potato. I don't know if you've ever had that, but that's actually really, really good. Yeah, that's really good. You can take some of that. Put it in the other pan. And if you wanted to add something like goat cheese or feta, you could do that to the vegetables too. Once you put it on, you know, like right before you serve it. So I think that could be kind of fun to add too. What are do we doing with the Worcestershire sauce, the thyme, and the parsley? The parsley is at the end. The thyme, um, the thyme. Was, I was just thinking, I'm like, is in the vegetables, so that's going to be. That's where you're putting the, the time is into the vegetable. And what about the worst, sis, worst sister shire sauce? Putting that in there as well. And what about the balsamic vinegar? Uh, we might not need that. Okay. <laughs> the potatoes go to the worst sister sauce, right? Let's get in the bushes here. I said it's a tablespoon of the Worcestershire sauce, right? Yeah, she said we add the Worcestershire sauce. Oh. Just not the box on it. We might not need it. Okay, I'm going to use both of them. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Worcestershire and a little bit of the balsamic. Mix it all together. And I put the thyme in there. And this is where you can actually put, this is where you want to put half the can of that, uh, of those fire rocks with tomatoes in. Because I forgot to buy those too. I'm going to put tomato paste. And that's about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And just mix it all together. Is that Shane wanting to help cook? Uh, he had to eat dinner. He is, he go help, is he trying to help you cook? All right, my tomato paste is not doing a very good job of mixing in with everything else. It's staying in one place. I got a glob. All right, so I'm just gonna keep mixing until the tomato paste mixes in with everything else. But this is generally what your meal should look like. It just looks like a big bunch of sauteed onions and mushrooms and cauliflower. And it should be fairly, it shouldn't be dripping but it shouldn't be dry. Does that make sense? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off 
off a piece of the, the potato and see if it's actually ready. Potatoes need to stay out for another minute. So they're almost ready, but not quite. They're still, like I said, it's another minute. And then when, once this batch is done, then you can go ahead and add maybe a little bit more olive oil if you need to, and then make the rest of them. But it is a good four minutes on each side for the potatoes so that they cook through. For a new can of All right. So I'm going to actually take my potato lattes off the plate. Well, I'm gonna at least make one 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 meal out of it. And so here I'm gonna make my smothered. There, there's my smothered potato lucky. There you go. There you go. Not bad, huh? Yeah, just wait for the potatoes to get done a little bit more. Pardon me? Waiting for our potatoes to get done a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's the that's the thing that we have to wait for is the potatoes. But at least you can take a, you can sneak a peek, so to speak. But it's definitely a good, you know, five five to six minutes. I would say at least five minutes per side, and then you just have to double check it. So my, I'm just so mine is my first batch is done, so to speak. And next next time, what is it? The 20, 27th, I think it is. Um, whatever the the fourth Tuesday is, we're gonna make butternut squash and pine nut risotto. Twenty second. The twenty second. Okay. It's two weeks. All right, 20 seconds. So on the 27th, we have butternut squash and pine nut risotto. So it's a little bit more, you know, hearty. And we might actually That's add some good. kind of, you know, I might actually add lentils in it just to give it a little bit more oomph. But that's gonna be the base of it is butternut squash and pine nuts. And who knows what else I might decide to add to it. But we might add, you know, we might add mushrooms. We might add, I think we're gonna add some kind of beans into it and the, or some kind of lentils. Oh, my potato, my potato lockies is sounding, it's sizzling over here. Ooh, I don't know about you, but this, this actually looks really good. Can you see how mine sizzled? It's nice and toasted brown. That's how you want it. I'm going to put those aside and make the next batch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do what you guys wanna do. Try it to see how it is. But I'm gonna make my next batch first. And try to scoop, if you've got liquid at the bottom, try to scoop that into your, into your potato pancake. I need to just move my nose so I can make smaller ones. Yeah. Don't forget you want to salt and pepper the next batch too. Because we always salt, put salt and pepper while they were cooking as opposed to in the batter.
So put the salt and pepper on there. And now I say it's time to try. So some of my caramelized onions. <clears throat> and here comes the taste test. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. You will like it. I'm 100% certain you will like it. And the Worcestershire sauce is balsamic, give it a little bit of tan. So it's very nice. Is anybody ready or no? Or is it just me? Hell no. <laughs> Pardon me? I always make too much, so I'm always cooking longer. Well, then you said you usually we're doing the too. same thing. We usually do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it's a, you know, unfortunately, it's only me cooking for me. So then I always make my teeny, teeny tiny portions so that I can have enough for, for leftovers. Yum. Yum. It's really good, isn't it? Really good. And this one doesn't, this one didn't take that long. Mm. We started, it's now 30, 40 minutes. So yeah, I think this is quite divine. It's gonna be very filling because it's made with potatoes. And then it's not inflammatory because we added the, um, we added the chickpea flour instead of um, wheat flour. So compliments to the chef. <laughs> that would be all, each one of you, not just me. And uh, enjoy your dinner. And if you want to uh, make comments and let us know how yours turned out, put it in the comments below. If you have any ideas or questions, then you can contact me directly at um, www.nutritioninmotion.net. And if you really enjoyed the video and enjoyed cooking with us, feel free to give us a donation through PayPal or Venmo in the links below. Enjoy and have a fabulous meal.